You are watching Apostolic Radio Charlotte, truth with the power to live it.
all across the church house. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We worship your holy, precious name. We glorify you today. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand together. Praise the Lord. It has been a wonderful to have Brother Stockman preaching here. He is a, my nephew on my wife's side. Uh, he claims to be my favorite nephew on my wife's side. And as long as he's the only one in Charlotte, that is true. Uh, recently, I say recently, some time ago, uh, he had just started preaching out. And he's done that for a long time, working a job and preaching out. Sometime last year, he made the commitment to full-time evangelism. And he's been doing that ever since. And since that time, the Lord's opened a lot of doors for him. And we're glad to have him here. He's a wonderful faith preacher. And that's the kind of preaching we need. We've got enough discouraged folks. We don't need discouraged preaching. We need faith preaching. We've got enough people with troubles. We need someone to preach about how we're going to come out of our troubles. Amen. Let's give him a Charlotte welcome right now. Would you do that? Why don't you give that to who it belongs to in this place? Amen. Well, we're here again tonight. I came believing for God to do some greater things. If you missed it this morning, you just missed it. I'm not talking about my preaching, but you miss God showing out in this house. You miss God doing some great things. And I came believing for some greater things. I want to just tell you again, it does not matter what you're going through in this place. It does not matter how big your sickness is. It does not matter how big your problem is. It don't matter what you're going through. There is a man in this house. All it takes is one touch from his hand. And that problem will go. That sickness will go. That disease will go. When I pray for somebody, I don't go in my name. It don't have nothing to do with Lance Stockman. But whenever I go and lay my hands on somebody's head, I use the name of Jesus. Because I know there's power in that name. You don't understand it unless he's actually touched your body. Unless he's actually healed you and delivered you. But whenever he has done that in your life, you could understand the power of that name. You could understand how great that name is. It's so sweet. I don't, I don't serve a false god who's dead and gone. I'm not caught up in some false religion or some false doctrine. But I'm living in something that's true. And I'm serving a God that indeed is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He's here. He's here. I'm believing he's going to do a work in this house. I give honor again to my aunt and uncle, your pastor, his wife and family. Give honor to them. Thank them for everything once more. I love being with them. Uncle Nathan, Uncle Nathan, he, he straightens me out. He puts me in my place whenever I come in. He makes sure that I'm humbled. He makes sure that I'm humbled whenever I come in. He says he don't know what, he's, what I'm talking about, but he's, he's fun to be around. I love them. Love them so much. I just want to pat you on the back for a second. You have something great going on in this church. I, I, I've been, I have been a lot of places, seen a lot of things, but I have never been to a church where you have so many different cultures and nationalities coming and praising the name of the Lord. I was amazed today. And you know, that's what a church should be like. It shouldn't be an all-white church. It shouldn't be an all-black church. It shouldn't be just one culture. It should be mixed. You got something going on in this house. We, we, Uncle Nathan, he brought me through a tour on all the different services going on. We first stopped at the Spanish church. They were getting after it. They were cutting up. 
crazy worship, radical faith. Then I went to the other, the other different rooms and places where they were having churches. I was amazed. I was amazed. You have something going on. And I'm believing and prophesying in faith for greater things, for bigger things, for more nationalities, for more people. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. I've got to get in this message. I'm going to start prophesying and moving in faith without even preaching. I've got to get in this message. Got to get into it. I'll be reading from the book of John chapter 9. John chapter 9. We'll begin reading in verse 1. John chapter 9 verse 1. When you have it, say amen. John chapter 9 verse 1. Somebody told me before I came on the platform that I looked very patriotic with the clothes that I have on. I was not trying to be patriotic, but I guess I'll take that. I'll take the patriotic look. Amen. St. John chapter 9, verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seen. I'll mainly be preaching from verse 3. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I want to preach to you from the title tonight, God has a plan. God has a plan. If you would, let's close our Bibles and pray that he would have his way once more in this place. Jesus, we're calling on you once more. We're believing for greater things tonight. We're believing for miracles. We thank you for what you've done this morning, the lives that you've changed, people's lives that you've turned around. We came again believing and expecting you to do greater things tonight. Anoint these lips of clay that I may speak what thus saith the Lord to your people. Tonight in Jesus' name, we give you the glory in advance for it. We give you the praise. And everybody say in Jesus' name, give God a hand clap of praise in this place as you're seated in Jesus name Jesus name God has a plan God has a plan since the beginning God had a plan from his creation God had a plan to the sin of Adam and Eve to their failure God had a plan to Joseph being hated by his brother, sold into slavery, but later was placed over Pharaoh's house and over the land of Egypt. I find that God, through all of this, had a plan in these people's lives. All the way to David being a little shepherd boy, but later slaying a giant, then becoming king over Israel and becoming a man after God's own heart, you will find that God had a plan all the way to the new testament to the birth of a man called jesus to all the miracles he performed to his death to his burial and resurrection you realize today that god has a plan to the day of pentecost to the book of revelation everything in between you will find that god has a design and a direct plan and purpose for this world and for our lives. I thank God today for His Word. I thank God that you could open up His Word anywhere from the book of Genesis to Revelation. You could read and you could find an answer to life's problems. You could read and realize that God has a plan for your life and for mine if we'll walk in the truth 
and we'll cleave and hang on to his word, we will find that God has a plan. Thank God for his word today. As the Bible said, whenever the disciples and Jesus came in contact with this man that was blind, the disciples, their, their mind was, was offset. Their mind wasn't in the mindset that Jesus had. Their mind was thinking that because this man was born blind from his birth, that he either committed sin or that his family committed sin. They thought that he was living under a curse. But Jesus knew the answer all, the, all along. He said, neither hath this man sinned or his parents that he was born blind, but he was born this way so that my works, so that the works of God could be made manifest in him. Could you imagine? That sounds cruel, don't it? Sounds almost mean to know that this man was born blind and lived all these years with this problem just so the works of God could be made manifest in him. But finally one day, the problem ceased. Finally one day, God showed up on the scene, touched the man and healed him and his problems was gone. And he served his purpose for living. He served his purpose. God's will and plan was done that day. And God got some glory out of that man's problem and situation and sickness in his life. Thank God for that. Have you, have you ever been there before in your life wondering what God's plan was? Wondering what he was doing in your life. But you could sit here today and look where the Lord has brought you from. You can now understand that through the trials and through the tests, through it all, God has brought you out. And today you could sit here and say, I am a stronger person. I am a better person. I know that it's God that has brought me through. I didn't make it all alone by myself. I didn't make it here today by myself. But God's hand was working in my life all alone. I know I've been messed up. I know I've been going through some things. There's been some struggles. There's been some trials in my life. But I realize today that through it all, God has made himself manifest in my life and through it all. After all, he's, he's just that personal. He's just that personal. He, from knowing every sparrow that falls, the Bible says, to knowing every hair on every head on every human being in this world, you know that God's personal. You know that God's personal. He cares. He cares about the rich man. He cares about the poor man. He cares about everybody. And he's just that personal to have a plan for your life. What a great God we serve. He's a God that could work things out over in Japan one day and he could be in Germany doing something at the same moment. He could be in California working a miracle out, but yet be in Louisiana doing a miracle over there. He's a God that could be there and yet be here in Charlotte, North Carolina, getting ready to perform some works in people's lives. He's just that personal. Just that personal. And he's got a plan. He's got a plan for your life and for mine. It's while God's plan is going on at times you feel alone and you feel in a dark place. You feel forsaken. You feel like you don't know the way out. Have you ever been there before? You felt all alone. Don't matter how spiritual you claim to be or how perfect your life may seem like it is, there will come a time, if not already, that you've been in a place. You've been in a place where you felt all alone and you needed the hand of God to work in your life. And your mind starts to wonder and you start to give the devil credit. How many times have you been there where you gave the devil credit? Every time you get sick in your body or things seem to go wrong, you always say, well, the devil's doing this or the devil's doing that. And before you know it, you're giving the devil credit. And you're letting him hear what he wants to hear. But you ought to turn your thinking around. You need to turn your mind around and realize that God might be getting ready to make himself manifest in my life. Quit giving the devil credit. Quit saying the devil's doing this and the, the devil's not giving you all your problems. The devil's not causing every sickness to come your way. Sometimes God sends some things your way to make you stronger and to make himself manifest in your 
life. He may be testing your faith just a little bit. He may be seeing what you're made of. He may be seeing what, what kind of faith you have. He may be seeing if your faith is weak or if your faith strong. You know, it's easy, folks. It's easy when things is going perfect to sit there and say, I have all the faith in the world. To sit there and say everything's going perfect and everything's going right. But let a trial come. Let a bad report come. Then you'll see where people's faith really lies. It's easy to dance and to worship when everything's going right. It's easy to praise Him when everything's perfect. It's easy to do. But I want to know, have you ever been there in a place where you've been down in the pit? And you've learned how to worship and praise Him. You've learned how to get radical faith somewhere in your spirit, like I was talking about this morning, and learn how to praise God and give God the credit in the midst of everything that's going on around you and praise Him. Have you ever been there before and seen that it was God's hand that was working in your life all alone and that brought you through? The Bible says, Though He slay me, yet... Well, I trust him. Though I've been through the fire, the Bible says, I'll come forth as pure gold. You realize that God has a plan. That God is getting ready to turn some things around. In the heat of the moment, whenever you're going through it and you feel like throwing in the towel, when most folks backslide and most folk give up on God, yet you manage to keep the faith and hang on and realize that God's getting ready to make himself manifest in my life. You've got to get the spirit of Job somewhere on the inside of you. Job said, naked came I into this world. Now, he lost everything that he had. Lost his sons, lost his cattle, lost all that. But yet when it was all said and done, he said, naked came I into this world, and naked shall I return. The Lord gives, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job knew where his strength and where his help came from. He knew who to depend on in the time of trouble. He knew where his faith relied on. And you know what? When it was all said and done, God restored some things. God took care of Job because Job never gave up on God. Job didn't turn around and get drunk and get strung out on all kind of dope and problems. Job hung on to the faith. And Job kept on believing. He kept on trusting, and he kept on giving God the credit. Let me tell you, folks, don't give up on God today. Don't give up on God today. Believe he's going to get ready to turn some things around and bring some things together in your life. Believe that sooner or later through this dark and through this cold place, God will make himself manifest in your life. When you could get that vision, when you could really understand that God's that kind of a God. You know, it scares me when people, when people talk about how perfect their life is all the time and they don't ever have struggles, they don't ever have tests, they're never sick in their body, they never have anything they go through. Those kind of people makes me nervous. Those kind of people worries me. And then those people who has the trials and they have the tests, they just give up completely. They throw in the towel. You can't preach faith to them. You can't get them to see the plan of God because their faith is weak. It's gone. It's out the door. They can't see past their problem. They can't see on the other side of the wall. They can't see on the other side of the test and on the other side of the trial. But for those people who could see beyond that, for those people who could gather a vision on the other side of their sickness and you could say, blessed be the name of the Lord through it all. That's when God's getting ready to turn some things around in your life. When you're sick in your body and you got all kind of pain going on, but yet you can manage to lift your hands and praise God and shout in the midst of it all. That's when God's going to make himself manifest in your life. God will restore it in a matter of time. Joel chapter 2 verses 25 and 26 says this, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten.
The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. I came to tell somebody tonight in this place God is getting ready to restore some things. Is there anybody who believes that? You need to tap into what I'm talking about just a little bit. You need to look beyond your problems just a little bit and say God's getting ready to make himself manifest in my life. Some of you have been weak in your faith, but I came to tell you in the spirit, you better get your dancing shoes back on. You better get your shouting shoes back on. Because God's getting ready to turn some things around in your life. You've been hanging on to his promises long enough. You've been waiting long enough. Tonight's your night. You ought to look at your neighbor in faith and say, neighbor, say, tonight's my night. Say, you may not worship and you may not respond. You may be satisfied and leave here the same way you came. But tonight is my night. Tonight, God is getting ready to make himself manifest in somebody's life. The devil's been having some of you down long enough. The devil's been having you defeated long enough. The enemy has taken your faith long enough. But God is getting ready to restore that. That the locust and the canker worm has taken from you. God is about to get some glory out of your trials and out of your test and out of your sickness and out of your disease. If you believe it, shout yes in this house. Came to tell you in faith, some of you is just to shout away. Some of you is just to praise away. Some of you is just to dance away. Some of you is just to hand clap away from receiving the promises of God. Some of you is just to step away from getting into the overflow and getting over into the promises that God's had in store for you. That there is some of you in this house, you have you have came, you have came. And you, you have felt lost. You, you have been seeking a ministry. You've been seeking God's plan and will for your life. I'm here to tell you God's about to reveal some things for you. God's about to reveal his promise and he's about to reveal his plan in your life. If you'll respond to him. I said, if you'll respond to him and get the faith and move towards God and say to yourself, after tonight, I'm going to leave here changed. After tonight, I'm going to leave here turned around. I'm no longer living in depression anymore. I'm no longer living in oppression anymore. I'm no longer living down in condemnation anymore. But tonight's going to be a new night. Tonight's going to be a new change. I'm glad some of you gathered what I'm saying and some of you agree. You know that you've been through some things in your life and God's made himself manifest. But I want to talk to somebody who's down in the pit tonight. Who's down in the pit and you've been walking around like the blind man for years, wondering, wondering, has God forsaken you? Has God left you? Has God turned his back on you? I'm here to tell you tonight he hasn't done it, but God's getting ready to make himself manifest in your life, in your family's life. There were so many folks that came up to me standing in the gap for people in their family. Saying, I have, I have husbands and I have children and, all, and children and all that that's lost. And uh, I, I need God to do a work. And you have felt like God's turned his back and God has forsaken you and, and, and your family. But I'm here to tell you that God's about to make himself manifest. 
God's about, you've been weak. You've been walking around with your head down. You've been feeling defeated. But after tonight, God is getting ready to make a change in your life. I speak it in faith. I believe it in faith. I proclaim it in faith that God's getting ready to get some glory out of some people's lives in this place. Let's all stand in this house. I'm not a long preacher. I don't preach long. I preach the word of God and the word of faith. And then I want you to respond if you believe it. If you believe it. If you've been going through. If you've been going through. You've been sick in your body. You've been having some pain in your body. You need a miracle from the Lord. The doctors has gave up on you. There's some family members that's given up on you. I'm here to tell you tonight, you need to respond. You need to respond. It's another night. God showed out this morning, performed miracles, done works this morning, and He's here again tonight. And He's getting ready to make Himself manifest in your life if you'll let Him. God's getting ready to turn some things around if you'll let Him, if you'll respond. After tonight, some of you will be singing a victory song tonight. You'll have a new song. You'll have a new song of praise. You'll have a new shout of victory. And you'll begin singing, look where the Lord's brought me from. Look where he's brought me from. Every hand is lifted in this place. I'm going to pray over you before you come up front. Jesus, we know that you are, you are a man that has every answer. You're a man that could turn things around. You're a man that could heal. You're a man that could deliver. You're a man that could set free. God, we don't understand everything at times. We don't understand the trial. We don't understand the test at times. But we believe that somewhere through it all, you're going to make yourself manifest. And tonight we came in this house believing for a work from you. We came believing that you're going to make yourself manifest in our lives. That you're going to turn things around. That you're going to heal that you're going to deliver, that you're going to set free. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Man, woman of God, you've been crying long enough. You've been shedding enough tears long enough. But tonight, God's getting ready to wipe some things away. God's getting ready to, you're getting ready to shed your last tear. God's getting ready to dry them up and turn things around in your life. In the name of Jesus. Woman of God, I speak to you right now in Jesus' name. I come against every attack of the enemy. I come against every problem in your body. Whatever it is, I bind it in the name of Jesus. And I release a miracle. I release signs and wonders in your life. God, begin to make yourself manifest in this woman of God's life right now. In the name of Jesus, such as I have, give I thee. Be healed, be delivered, and be set free. From the inside out, begin to do it, Lord. Begin to do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. If you're in this place and you need a miracle in your body, you need God to turn some things around, you need God to deliver you, maybe you came in this house needing the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You came wanting a change, needing a change in your life. Tonight's your night. Tonight you don't have to leave here the same way you came. Tonight you can leave here healed. You can leave here changed. You can leave here delivered. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. These altars are open and the waters are troubled. Would you come on in in faith? Would you move out of your pew, man and woman of God, and come standing? I want to lay my hands on your head. Let the ministry lay their hands on you and speak the word of faith over your life. Pray the prayer of faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be healed, be delivered, and be set free. 
Be healed, be delivered, and be set free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Tonight's a new night. You're going to walk a new walk. You're going to make a new step in faith. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Apostolic Radio Charlotte. Truth with the power to live it.